Welcome back to this Wednesday edition of Focal Point on AFR Talk. Brian Fisher is my name. Great to have you in the conversation. Catastrophic global warming alert. Meteorologist Joe Bastardi saying that this Christmas is going to be the coldest Christmas since 1989. Catastrophic global warming alert. Some kind of um, White House task force on global warming met yesterday in Washington, D.C. Two inches of snow. Most of the federal government was shut down. Most of the schools in the D.C. DC area were shut down. So here is a task force on global warming. Two inches of snow, sleet, rain, cold. They went ahead and met. That's just hilarious to me. Task force on global warming meeting with two inches of snow on the ground. D.C. shut down. Schools shut down. Now, a couple things that I want to get to in this segment. You know, we are the American Family Association. So one of the things that we always want to do is, you know, uh, our goal here to, uh, this is just my own phraseology, but our goal here at AFA is to make America the friendliest place in the world to raise a family. That's what we're about. We want this to be the friendliest place in the world to raise a family. And that, that, and, and it's because we understand the importance of the family not just for the members of the family, but for the larger culture. You know, the family is the cornerstone institution in God's economy. If you look at the scriptures, the first institution that he created was marriage, and the second institution he created was the family. He, this was long before he created government. I mean, government's not given the authority to, ex, to take care uh, use capital punishment until Genesis chapter 9. Man was not allowed. Remember, um, the brother that killed the other guy, Caleb killed his brother. So Caleb was the guy that killed Abel. And God hunts him down and says, the blood of your brother is crying out to me from the ground. And uh, Caleb says, well, look, I'm afraid for my life. People who find me are going to kill me because remember, the only people alive would have been their brothers and sisters. So they're going to kill me. And, and God says, no, I'm not going to allow it. I'm not going to permit it. So God prohibited the use of capital punishment from Genesis 4, all the way till Genesis 9, until after the flood, man was not given authority by God to execute, take care, uh, carry out capital punishment. And part of it is God wanted us to give us an idea of what a world looks like, what a society looks like where, when capital punishment is not invoked for the crimes of homicide and rape and kidnapping and other serious crimes. Now, in the ancient civil code of Israel, a crime against property always involved restitution uh, and a penalty. That's how you took care of crimes against property. You didn't lock people up, didn't throw them in prison, throw away the key. You made them pay it back, plus a penalty. That's what you did with crimes against property. But homicide uh, was, uh, there was no death penalty for homicide until Genesis 9. God says, okay, I want to give you an idea of what a society is going to look like if you have a government that does not use, is not authorized to use capital punishment. And it was chaos. You got to the point where every intention of the thought of every man was only evil all the time. God had to wipe the whole thing out. I mean, massive capital punishment in the flood. I have no idea now how I got off on that. Yeah, the point is that the family is God's primary institution. It is the cornerstone institution before government, before business, before education, uh, the marriage and family is the fundamental institution. Every little family is is a, is a tiny little civilization. That's why we hate divorce. That's why God hates divorce. It shatters this tiny little civilization and it destroys the psyche of the people that, uh, that are in it. So you can understand, have you ever, you ever uh, been through it or you've ever had somebody you love go through it, you've experienced it with your family of origin, you know it's a terrible, terrible, horrible thing. It's so contrary to God's design. So that's why we want to fight it and that's why I believe our divorce laws ought to be strengthened. Now, in order to protect vulnerable young children, I mean, adults get chewed up. Don't misunderstand me. Adults get chewed up just as bad uh, as, well, not as bad as children. I think children just take the brunt of it. I mean, it just destroys them. But it can completely shatter adults that are the victims of divorce as well. Now, here's an interesting story from LifeSite News. And this is reporting on research that was done at McGill University Health Center. And it was published in the journal Cerebral Cortex. So this is a peer-reviewed journal. This is research that was done 
at one of the major health centers, health universities, research universities in Canada, McGill University. And here is the conclusions they come to. And dads, I want you to hear this because I, I, I want to send a word of commendation out to every dad that I'm talking to that's listening to me right now. You're committed to your wife. You are committed to your children. You are involved in their lives. You want to be an invested father with them. You, uh, you tussle with your boys. You pray with them. You read stories to them. You coach them in little league and soccer uh, and all that kind of stuff. You are an engaged dad. You go to their events. You go to their games. You go to their parent-teacher conferences because you're committed to your kids. And I just want to tell you how important today, I want to stress how important you are to the development of your children, particularly your sons, but children as well. Here's the results of the study. A new study shows that growing up without a father not only affects behavior, listen to this, it transforms children's brain structure. This is, from, again, from McGill University. Researchers studied the behavior and brains of Californian mice who, like humans, are monogamous and raise their children as a unit. Mice who were separated from their fathers, listen to this, showed greater regression antisocial behavior, and abnormal social interactions than those raised with both parents. Now, you start thinking about the social pathologies that we are dealing with right now in our culture. You've got the knockout game. These are these thugs that are going around finding innocent people and trying to knock them out with one punch. Some of these people have died. Some of them have wound up in the hospital. Uh, I've been willing to bet every dollar I've got that 98% of the youth that are involved in those knockout games running in those gangs of thugs don't have a dad in the home, have grown up without a father present. You think about these bash mobs. Again, these young, uh, th these, these mobs of young teenagers, and they organize these with cell phones and all. They will descend on a convenience store. They will descend on a Walmart, and they will clean the place out. I mean, it is a hit-and-run deal, and they'll just clean the place out. And store owners are virtually helpless because most of them, if it's a franchise, they won't let them own a gun for their protection. So they just got to sit there and watch it happen. By the time the police get there, the place is cleaned out and everybody's gone. I'd be willing to bet that virtually everybody involved in one of those bash mobs or flash mobs, whatever you want to call it, does not have a father presence in the home. Because that's what we discover. Science is telling us, the social researchers, if, a, if a, an infant, a child, a juvenile is separated from his father. What do you get? Greater regression, antisocial behavior, and abnormal social interaction. Now, that's why I say the health of the family. See, it's not just a matter of, uh, uh, of the family, as, as important as that is, and that's paramount. The point I'm making, look, there is a social cost. When you have the, the family unit breaking down, crumbling, falling apart, there is a social cost. Uh, there is obviously the cost of the, the destruction of property, the loss of life. You've got cities like Memphis and Chicago and D.C. They're having one person killed every day in those places. Uh, you know, it, 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 it's, it's just out of control. So there's a cost. You have innocent people being murdered. You have the loss of property. You have people being injured, winding up in the hospital. You've got an increased cost for police presence. You've got to prosecute these people. You've got to build jails to hold them. You have to have judges to try them. You've got to have places to store them when they're convicted of these uh, heinous crimes against people. So there are huge social costs to the breakdown of the family. That's why you cannot separate, you can't separate social values, social conservatism from a, a conservative worldview. It's all integrated. It's all holistic. It's a seamless garment. You can't carve out the economic part and say, we're just going to be economic conservatives because if you've got the breakdown of the family, it's going to compel uh, it's going to put e economic pressures on your budget. You got to hire more police. You got to build more jails. You got to have more courtrooms. Uh, you you got to build more hospitals and all that kind of stuff. So there's huge social costs, economic costs. Now, here I want to get to this point. Even more groundbreaking was their finding that the behavior, listen to this, was not the only thing affected by the lack of a father. Mice 
raised by one parent had a misshapen prefrontal cortex, prefrontal cortex, the portion of the brain associated with behavior, decision-making, and problem-solving. Paternal deprivation during development affects the neurobiology of the offspring. The neurobiology, the development of the brain, the structure of the brain, is impacted when a father is missing in the life of his child. Our results, this is a secular outfit now, completely secular outfit. This is not FRC or AFA. Our results emphasize the importance of the father during critical neurodevelopmental periods and that father absence induces impairments in social behavior that persist to adulthood. In other words, the impact on the structure of the brain is something that that child will live with for the rest of his life. Those, those changes, the lack of development in, in the prefrontal cortex, that's permanent. That lasts uh, forever. The absence of a father has been associated with a string of poor behavior and life outcomes, including higher rates of substance abuse and uh, criminality. But this article says that the presence of fathers, even uncommunicative ones, raises the levels of positive outcomes for children. Again, going back to sort of behavioral issues. You know, so some dads are just kind of quiet. You know, some dads are just not as engaged with their kids. They may not know how to talk to them or not comfortable talking to them. They may be a little self-contained. That's fine. This is an even uncommunicative fathers. If they're present, if they're engaged, if they're involved, it provides an environment in which uh, the human brain can develop as it is, it is intended to do. So again, I just want to stress to you dads, I, I just want to tell you what you're doing in the life of your kids. It, it, it's absolutely critical. I mean, if you want to think about it from a patriotic standpoint, most patriotic thing you can do, dad, is love your kids. Be involved with your kids. Wrestle with your boys. Coach them in soccer. Co even if you don't like soccer. I never like soccer. Uh, coach them in soccer. Well, I, and I didn't do much coaching either because I didn't know anything about soccer. But be invested in their lives because the impact you have is going to have a permanent, lasting effect on their behavioral choices. It's going to have a permanent uh, impact on healthy brain development. You're helping your, your sons and your daughters develop the kind of mind that God intended for them to have. So good job, dads. Hang in there. Stick with your kids. Focal Point AFR Talk.